Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Well? I just realized there's cute little cicadas up there on the... <laughs> oh, that's cute. I like that. Things are certainly reaching a middle. <laughs> Seems like it. Ah. Uh, after dinner, without the energy to watch television, I climbed into the futon of my bedroom and let my head be overtaken by gloomy thoughts. See? Depression kid right here. He's literally goes to bed. You like can only watch TV. Goes to bed is like, oh, I'm gonna be gloomy now. No, <laughs> let's talk about this. He had none of this behavior until right now, I know. and it's happening now after horrible murders <laughs> and know. disappearances. I know. I know. I'm being. I'm. I, I'm being uncharitable. <laughs> I still defend my original hypothesis, but I am very being very uncharitable right now. Yes, I. I do concede that. Who would not let their head be overtaken by gloomy thoughts in this situation? <laughs> hmm, great question. I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> I told Rika-chan anything and everything. She had seemed trustworthy at the time, but had that really been the right choice? The more I look back on it, the less I understood what Rika-chan was saying. Not only did she know about Takano-san and Tomatake-san's deaths, but she spoke of them as if she were a concerned party. After all this time in my futon, I began to tremble fiercely. Had I been lured in by Rika-chan's sweet smile and told her things I shouldn't have, I should have continued to feign ignorance. I shouldn't have shown her such a weak side of me. My emotions are a mix of regret and fear, and it colored the darkness of the night with an additional layer of terror. Suddenly a knock. I might have yelped. That's how surprised I was. Ah! Keiichi, I've been calling your name for a while. You have a phone call. It's from Sonozaki-san. Which one? It was Dad. Wrong voice. I re <laughs> and impressive thing you're doing with your voice there, Dad. I reached out for the cordless phone through the gap in my door. Sonozaki-san, the, the older sister or the younger? I don't know. Ask her yourself. Ugh. Took the receiver and buried myself in my futon again. Uh, hello? Mion? Or is it Shion? It's me, Shion. Good evening. I practically jumped out of bed. It was Shion who I'd hoped so desperately would call me back last night. Uh, Shion, I am... I'm sorry about last night. I got all riled up. <sighs> I heard what sounded like a deep sigh on the other end. You and me are in the same position, aren't we? I shouldn't have blamed you for everything like that. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, so please cheer up. I called you because I'm in a better mood. If you're sorry, then I'll forgive you, so please stop apologizing. But if it was Mion that called him, what is... <laughs> are they... Are she and Mion just playing, like, some weird level of 2D, like, of, of <laughs> like, 4D chess with Keiichi here? And Keiichi's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know who's trying to get what out of me right now. <laughs> Her tone still sounded a little angry, but for the moment she said she'd forgive me. You're right, too. We were tied to the same fate. Making sure the other is alright is the only way we can guarantee our own safety. Yeah, I agree. We absolutely need to share whatever information we have, so that we don't die like Takano and Tok Tomodake-san did. Ugh. Then... Let's continue from where we left off. You'll listen without getting angry this time, right? <sighs> yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. Firstly... It seems sneaking into the ritual storehouse was more of a taboo than we thought. Takano-san and Tomotake-san's miserable ends, terrible enough that you could call them a warning. They were more than enough to make me believe that. The culprits killed those two, the ones responsible for sullying the storehouse, and they'll come for us next. I know you want to deny that, but please accept it. It'll be too late to believe me after you've disappeared, okay? I, I got it. You can never be too careful after all. I don't want to accept it either. To think that sneaking a peek at that museum of torture devices deserves a death like that. I don't want to believe it. That's what a taboo is. For those who honor it, if one breaks the taboo, no matter how small or innocent their intentions were, they wouldn't be forgiven. Let's report anything we notice that seems strange. If we connect all the tiny pieces that we have, then just maybe we'll find out who killed them, or maybe even the truth behind the incidents of the previous years. 
We could find the key that'll resolve everything. Ugh, you're right. You're right about that. All I was doing was waiting in fear, but Shion had already thought that far ahead. Given how trustworthy she felt, I became embarrassed over how passive I was being. Then I'll start, since I suggested it. I feel like somebody has been watching me lately. What? It might be my imagination, but I'll tell you anyway. I think it's just me, but if you feel like you're being watched too, Kei-chan, then maybe it's not just my imagination. Interesting. Remember his reported feeling in chapter one there of being watched yep. and someone following him? Fascinating. Don't worry. At the very least, everything's been fine for me. I think. I spoke with Shio and I thought back on today. I had no grounds to say that everything was fine. I see. Then, I suppose it was my imagination, but... You be careful too, Kei-chan. Mm. Be especially careful when you're by yourself in public. I'm in Okinomiya, so I won't be alone very often, but you live in Hinamizawa. There will be a lot of times you'll be alone. Please be extra careful. You're right. Yeah, I'll be careful. Also, about my sister. Has she been acting strange lately? Your sister? Oh, oh, me own, right. What do you mean by acting strangely? Well, yesterday, I... She came to me and asked me where I was on the night of Watanagashi. What? That, that's... Ugh, she asked me that too. The day before yesterday, I think, Mion asked me. I see. I told her I wasn't there. What did you say? I did the same thing. I just dodged the question. Both of us gave a quiet sigh of relief. Ever since the night of the festival, my sister has been acting strangely. We can't be too careful, so just be aware, okay? Mion was acting strangely. Aside from her asking me about the night of the Watanagashi, she hadn't seemed too out of the ordinary. At least from my point of view. Her twin sister, though, was saying she was acting weird. It was such a slight chance that a stranger like me wouldn't be able to notice. Got it. I'll, I'll start being careful. I always have Rena with me on my way back from school, so I shouldn't end up alone with Mion very often. Please be careful. If there's anything that's bothering you, you can tell me. All right. Okay, then is there anything you want to tell me, Kei-chan? My turn. That's right, maybe I should report on Ooishi-san asking me the same question at the library. Oh, that time when you were too slow to escape. How can you read my face over the phone? We're not even on FaceTime. Yeah, Ooishi-san asked me pretty forcefully whether I was with Takano-san on Tomotake-san that night, and whether I had seen you. He seemed to have been seeing the four of us together. From the police's point of view, that would make us the last people who had seen them. I suppose, given that, it's only natural that they'd be interested in us. I evaded the questions then, too, but that may have just made them more interested. There's no way I could have tricked that sly old fox, Ooishi-san. My troubled countenance would only have made him even more certain. Hey, Shion, since they're the police, shouldn't we just tell them? I mean, considering our situation, I think having them on our side would be a good thing. She didn't answer right away. For a few moments, all I could hear was her breathing as she thought about it. Now that I think of it, he said, oh, Ishisan said there was something possibly shady about Mion. He says what I think he said. Yeah, yeah, he definitely did. As I explained yesterday, the Sonozaki family holds a lot of influence over Hinamisawa. Oishi is under the impression that the whole village, with the Sonozaki family at the center of it all, is responsible for the recurrent freak deaths. The whole village is behind them, with the Sonozaki family at the center? Please. Don't get angry like you did yesterday and just listen. I hammered that home before I got too upset. During the Hinamizawa Dam Wars, the priest who everyone was anticipating to lead the anti-dam movement acted as though he were unrelated. So the Sonozaki main house rose up to take charge. Those goddamn wars! <laughs> My sister told you about all the battles that happened, right? Yeah, all of Hinamizawa got together and fought as one. They held protests, brought it to court, even appeared on TV. In reality, there were many things that happened that were far more extreme. Under the surface, the Sonozaki main house was doing all sorts of illegal things to oppose it. They were acting illegally? For example, they would sneak into the construction site in the middle of the night and steal equipment or break it or put 
sugar cubes in the gasoline tanks of the construction vehicles. <laughs> is that where Mion's record came from? <laughs> is this the nature of her recurring encounters with the foreman? Sugar in the gasoline tanks? Why would they? You don't know? It's practically the representative guerrilla tactic. It was used by underground organizations in France in World War II, for one. When you put sugar in, the engine gets burned out and breaks down. That's... It's pretty bad, though, isn't it? It was destruction of property and nothing less. When they beefed up the guard at the construction facility, the family turned to attacking important construction personnel who worked there. The government officials who had received permission for the construction, for example, received all kinds of threats. Not just people from the prefectural office, either. Apparently this reached as far as the Ministry of Construction. As far as I've heard, they even kidnapped a child once. What? So this is... Presumably Shion. Spilling the wrongdoings of the Sonozaki family to Keiichi. Yeah. Okay. Again, I don't know that we believe that it's necessarily her, but it's okay. That's interesting. And and very much painting the her, her own family in a very like no, they were the aggressors kind of light. <laughs> Whether or not you agree with their their purpose, like th- this is a very unsparing and very critical depiction. Yep. So I've already heard they even kidnapped a child once. Hmm. Interesting. That certainly puts a different spin on what I thought the the altercations between Mion and the foreman were going to look like. This definitely paints a di- much different picture. Kidnapped? Yes. The child of an important person in the Ministry of Construction who was in charge of the Hinamizawa Dam got spirited away. Then one day, all of a sudden, he was rescued in the Takatsudo Mountains, which are upstream from Hinamizawa, child of an important person in the Ministry of Construction who was in charge of the Hinamizawa Dam got spirited away. Ministry of Const- I don't think we know anything about... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be all new. Apparently there were never any criminal accusations, but people whispered that it had been a threat to stop the dam construction from happening. Besides that, there are stories about so many different threats that I couldn't possibly list them all. That's... Wow, that's sort of bad, isn't it? Right in the middle of the whole thing, the first incident happened. That's when the dismemberment of the construction manager occurred. People whispered that the Sonozaki family had bought out the principal offender, but... Of course, he fled, and they still haven't found him. Interesting. This is a much, much different picture of what these events look like than... than I had guessed, given what we saw in Chapter 1. This paints it as more like a very unsparing and unrelenting offensive on behalf of the Sonozaki family. Mm -hmm. So even if I had the correct party, it certainly doesn't feel like it's the same kind of tenor here. There is no... There is, like, no noble cause here. This just feels like, you know, protecting my backyard. (laughs) When she put it that way, the Sonozaki family definitely seems suspicious... Oishi-san even seems to think the criminal was erased, so he wouldn't talk, which is pretty reasonable of him. It's even enough to make me think that the Sonozaki main house is doing some really shady things behind the scenes, even though I'm related to them. You telling me to believe that? The the, the Sonozaki main house, where Mio lives, has done all those bad things? You're telling me to believe it? Even if you don't, Kei-chan, the villagers do. While they opposed the dam in upright and lawful ways, the Sonozaki house did the dirty work for them. Everyone believes that, that they fought at the front so they'd take the brunt of the criticism. So they're respected as sort of heroes of darkness. Huh. I think I only really know one part of it. For example, the really bad stuff like the kidnapping. I think only a handful of people even know about it, including Grandma. The Sonozaki family is secretive after all. Secretive, huh? A family so unforthcoming that even Shion, who is related to them, doesn't know everything about them. The Sonozaki family. Unlike Shion, her older twin Mion was deeply involved with everything, and that was not a fun thought to entertain. My sister, though young, 
was the one who acted as the center of the illegal resistance movement. Neod was? But what do you mean? Well, our dad is a big shot Yakuza. Even when she was little, my sister managed to subjugate a bunch of young street rats. Then she played all sorts of tricks on them and just generally got in their way. Mio did that? Now she's pretty laid back, so it might be hard to imagine. She did everything, from property damage to threats and even acts of violence, and she was picked up for it countless times. Though, since she was a kid, they could get her released pretty easily. She learned that her age could be used as a weapon. It may have been indiscreet, but I couldn't help but chuckle dryly. She may have been young, but she was certainly still Mion. Even back then, she had already been known for her craftiness. It's nothing to laugh about. Please, take this seriously. I'm sorry, I I didn't mean to. She had gotten pretty angry at me just now. Well, her delinquency soon got her into a position of authority in the Sonozaki main house. It's not unthinkable that Oishi suspects them for the dismemberment incident, and the later ones, too. For a few moments, I was dumbstruck at the tales of Mion's past. None of them matched the image I had of her. A younger Mion dirtying her hands with all sorts of crimes, giving the damn construction project hell. As the successor to the Zonozaki main family, she was always right at the center of the vortex of strange incidents occurring year after year. Was that really the Mion I knew? Maybe the one I know isn't the real Mion? I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't bring myself to accept these images of Mion I was hearing from another person. Well, back to the main subject. I just wanted you to know that my sister is someone worth being cautious around. Please be careful. I didn't want to understand. Mion was his fantastic friend. She would never do something back to back me in a corner like that. She did ask me pretty harshly about the night of the festival, but even that... It wasn't like she'd said it in a mean way or anything. Alright, I'll make sure to be careful. We're sisters related by blood, but... Within the Sonozaki family, we're basically of a different class. I want you to recognize how distant my position is from hers, please. The more Shion tells me about Mion, the less I understand who Mion is. The Mion I know wasn't a dangerous person. She joked around, smiled a lot, and was full of passion. Now that I realize I held such a view towards her, she was telling me to change it. To be careful around the best friend ever. To doubt her. The idea was very sad and painful. How many kneecaps do you think Mion has broken? <laughs> <laughs> Four. Conservative (laughs) estimate. Four. Now, about Oishi. If you think it's a good idea, then I think we should give him the information he needs. I think getting the police on our side will work in our favor. That doesn't sound like Shion or (laughs) Mion. This must be (laughs) Threon. You thought so too, Shion. It's just... At the moment, like I explained, the police have their eyes on the Sonozaki family already. Oishi in particular completely believes that they're the masterminds behind the serial incidents. That includes me, of course. So, I don't really want much to do with Oishi. I see. So she wants Keiichi to take the fall. If Oishi-san had found out about the Sonozaki family's strife-filled history, he probably wouldn't be very happy with Shion either. At last I understood Mion's instinctive dislike for Oishi-san. It's probably out in the open at this point, but try not to give my name to him. If you agree to that, then I don't think there's a problem with you telling him anything. Got it. I won't mention your name. The police's investigative ability should be quite a reliable weapon for us right now. If Oishi tells you anything interesting, then let me know as well. Here's the thing. No matter which Sonozaki this is, they have to know that that's not true. They have to know that their family has their thumb on the police department. (laughs) Right? So, this is really just trying to maneuver Keiichi into taking the fall and being the next person to disappear. At the same time, they know their family has a thumb on the police department, but they also know that Oishi has been a thorn in their side, and, like, suspects them, and is, like, trying to buck their authority to the point where they had to call in some guys to talk to him and his boss and be like, stop that. Right, right, that one time, to be like, hey, hey, come on now. So, if if you did need, if you did need an ally in a position of authority, that particular police officer would feed him the story he wants, but get him to go in the wrong direction. Something like that. Yeah, of course. We'll share information and investigate together. Who killed them? Who killed Takano-san and Tobatake-san? Who was after us? Until we know, we need to defend ourselves. Anything else? Besides what Oishi told you, I mean... If anything has happened, no matter how minor, please tell me. Aside from my discussion with Oishi-san? Oh, 
Uh, should I tell her that I revealed everything to Rika-chan? <laughs> Rika-chan was acting like she knew something I didn't. She told me to leave it to her, but what? Well, that's right. When I was talking to her, I mentioned Shion's name, too. Was that a mistake? Felt like Shion would get angry. Nothing else, Kei-chan? I had remained quiet for a little while, so Shion encouraged me to speak, unable to bear the silence. Um, as I struggled with what to say, she addressed me instead. It doesn't sound like it, so can I ask you something? I just heard this myself. Is it true that old man Kimiyoshi went missing? The old man Kimiyoshi? My gut told me that was the name of the mayor. You mean the mayor? Wait, Shion, you haven't heard? I don't know anything. I just overheard my dad talking about it on the phone again. Realize I shouldn't have said that. Here in Hinomizawa, the things that happened around this time when Oryashirasama's was curse would recur would all be covered up. Yeah, actually, last night, after a meeting, he didn't come home. So all of Hinomizawa was confused. They searched all through the village, but if they found him, then I haven't heard. The police should be searching for him as well. Why didn't you tell me something that important right away? Because you just said it. You. She shouted angrily at me, bringing all her emotion to bear. I'm sorry, I thought you already knew. I didn't want to hide it or anything. The receiver was silent. Did she get mad again and hang up? She owned hello? Kei-chan, what... What should I do? Shion's tiny, confused voice sounded like it belonged to a different person than the one yelling a few seconds ago. What's wrong? Uh, tell me, we're not keeping secrets from each other, right? She hesitated for a long while, but then she confessed. I'm sorry, I... Well, I didn't mean to hide it. It was just that, well... Oh, is this her? Yeah, this okay. is her. It was just that, well, the conversation got turned around and, uh... We're on the same side, right? It won't get mad, so tell me honestly. She still hesitated for a few moments, and then in a resigned voice she continued. I... Uh, old man Kimiyoshi, I... I told him everything. She seemed to think that I would yell at her right after she said that, so I heard her catching her breath. Contrary to what she thought, I was a little relieved. Shion had done the same thing that I had when I confessed everything to Rika-chan. So, in an as gentle voice I could, so as not to set her off, I responded. Old man Kimiyoshi, he's someone you feel comfortable confiding in, Shion? Yes, he would... When I was little, he was really nice to me. Shion felt the same pain as the rest of us from the mayor's disappearance. She had a different kind of strength from Mion, and as she continued, her voice sounded truly sad and pained. All I did was play tricks on him, but he would always just smile. He listened to anything I had to say. He was such a kind person. C c calm down, Shion. It's not like he's dead, all right? Don't lose heart so easily. Shion didn't answer. Even as I said it myself, I didn't think we'd ever find the missing mayor again. We probably wouldn't even figure out if he was alive or dead. She must have been thinking the same thing. That night, I told the mayor that we snuck into the ritual storehouse. Also that someone saw us and was out to get us. Does the mayor know how absurdly Takano-san and Tobatake-san died? Yes, he knew about it. I told him that they died by Oyashiro-sama's curse and that I could be made a sacrifice to calm his anger. I just said it straight out. Right. What then? Old man Kimiyoshi didn't get angry. He smiled and then told me that if I was properly sorry about it, there was no way I'd be demoned away. He was really smiling and he told me to leave it to him. <laughs> Until Shion stopped sobbing, I was unable to find any words for her. I couldn't imagine what kind of person the mayor was, nor what Shion's relationship with him was like. Words of comfort, however, mean so much to us when we're about to be crushed by anxiety. Today, Rika-chan taught me that, too. If someone who gave me such a sense of security were to disappear, then I could guess what kind of shock Shion was in. It's my fault, because I... I revealed everything. Stop it, Shion. It's not your fault. No, it is my fault. I, I told him everything. Old man Kimiyoshi found out about everything, so... He has to have been killed. It was right after I told him, after all. He disappeared the same night that I confessed, and he told me everything was going to be all right. Does that mean Shion is claiming to be at that meeting in the hall, in the, the meeting hall by the shrine? Because that's where Kimiyoshi was last seen. 
hmm. that that evening, right? He was last seen uh, at at that meeting hall with a bunch of other Hinamazawa. So is she claiming to be there, or is she making this up, or is this just? I don't know. Did this happen earlier? And I don't know. He found out, so he became involved. I should never have told him. All of this should have just been our fault. Only the four of us. It wasn't something I should have told to someone else. He got killed because I told him. He got killed because he knew. He got killed because I revealed it. Hey, 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 stop! If they were doing that, then they would obviously have killed you before killing the mayor. The order is all wrong. You or I should have been killed first. Why the hell would someone else be killed first? No, it's in order. They must be planning to kill us last of all. What? What? They're not killing the first people who come to mind. They start by killing those we're close to. And then after that, they've caused us so much pain, they'll kill us. That must be what they're doing. I I, I said, calm down. Shio, Shio and you're in sock. You're panicking. The mayor's disappearance has nothing to do with you. It's unconnected. It's not related to Takano-san and Tomatake-san dying at all either. My words came out as a scream as if I were shouting them at myself. No. It is connected. It just has to be. I told him. So he was killed. He got killed because he knew. I confessed it to him. So he got killed. She repeated the same thing as before as though she were in a delirium. Despite my trying to console the crazed Shion, for some reason the shadow at my feet began to freeze. From that shadow, a cold arm reached out so cold it seemed like it would freeze even my heart just by touching me and grabbed my ankle. The heat generated by my body, the arm was absorbing it. It was a horrible chill. A freezing cold, numbingly frigid. It was an inviolable chill of fear. And though I sympathized... Though I sympathized with Shion, I had been naive in thinking it was something only she had to worry about. In my head, Shion's eerie words repeated again and again. He was killed because I told him. He was killed because he found out. I confessed everything. So he was killed. Those words echoed through my head like a monotone mantra. And finally, even those repetitions took on meaning. The quiet shaking that had already overtaken me turned into a violent shiver that shut up my spine. Rikajan! It's Rikajan! What? What did you say just now? Well, the truth is, I told her about it. I told Rika-chan today. Rika-chan? You mean Rika-chama? The one from the Furude Shrine? Ah, caught yourself slipping, Mion. Caught yourself slipping. What? She, um, she never refers to her as uh, Rika-chama. Who doesn't? Uh, Mion. Mio never calls Rika Rika Chama. Yeah, and this is meant to be Shion, right? Yep. So wait, so I don't understand. It sounds like you've just described a true statement that doesn't bring up anything confusing. Because she described it as Rika. Ch- oh, she's repeating. I see. She's repeating um, Keiji's words first. <clears throat> I thought it was Mio slipping up by saying Rika Chan first, and been like, I, I mean, I mean Rika Chama. No, no, okay. Yes, Rika Chan. I felt so scared and uneasy that I did it. I told her. When you did, what did she say? The cat is worrying too much. Uh, Oh. The cat is worrying too much. I'll do something about it for sure. That's what Rika-chan said, and then she smiled. She smiled just like the missing mayor had when when he encouraged Shion. I'm sorry, Shion. I'm a bit bit worried about Rika-chan. Ugh. Right. If you're that concerned, then don't worry about me. Please, go find out whether she's safe. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll call you again tomorrow at the same time. When I do, you'll know I'm still all right. Got it. I'll be waiting. Okay, bye. Sorry. I'm hanging up. I put down the receiver without waiting for Shion to say goodbye. The danger to Shion and myself was secondary at this point. My sixth sense was blaring alarms in my head. I don't like this feeling. It's really bad. It's definitely, definitely bad. Oh, damn it. Please be safe, Rika-chan. She said you worry too much. Leave it to her. <laughs> and you're like, oh, no, I can't believe it. Well, I, I guess she is a child. <laughs> then again, so did the mayor, apparently. Yeah. According to she on the mayor is like, oh, don't worry about it. Leave it to me. And then, bam, vanished off the face of the earth. So, I don't know. 
Interesting. Let's read some tips. Tips, tips, tips. Feeling tipsy. The Three Families in Modern Times. As previously described, the Three Families Council today is a mere shell of democracy. In reality, it is a dictatorship run by the Sonozaki family. Both the Kimiyoshi and Furude families are far from their former glory, and it doesn't seem at all like they've maintained the ancient traditions. Only the Sonozaki family has retained their glory from the past, and has inherited many colorful traditions from the age known as Onigafuchi Village. Even the most recent, verifiable example of Watanagashi that occurred at the end of the Meiji era seems to have been done under the orders of the Sonozaki family. Refer to the three families' genealogical tree from the late Meiji. At the start of the Meiji era, the Sonozaki family wanted to push the development of Hinamizawa village, so they took a strong role in leadership. During the Dam Wars a few years ago, the Kimiyoshi family served as the chair of the opposition alliance, but... This was in name only. In actuality, the Sonozaki family reigned as leader behind the scenes. People whisper that perhaps the Kimiyoshi family dictated acts of opposition that could be publicized, and the Sonozaki family enacted those which could not. Even in Hinamizawa, they whisper that the multitude of unsettling incidents reported during the dam protests, such as the kidnapping of the famous head of the Ministry of Construction's son, had been carried out by the Sonozakis. Additionally, they say that perhaps the Sonozaki family's secret maneuvering was responsible for the serial freak death incidents that have continuously occurred in recent years as well. The serial freak death incidents are without a doubt the second coming of the traditional Watanagashi. They must be enacting the Watanagashi on the day of the original Watanagashi, which has fallen to the level of an ordinary village festival in order to remind the villagers of the holy laws of Onigafuchi village. It's safe to assert that exploring the Sonozaki family is the fastest route for researching it today. If I can expose the contents of the Furude Shrine storehouse, I'd like to narrow my research target to the Sonozaki family next. The Sonozaki house is strictly guarded by security cameras on the premises, but thankfully I've become acquainted with the sisters Mion, the next heir, and Shion, I want this to be a breakthrough I can connect to my next line of research. Oh, Mio. So it's not a surprise that Shion ran into Takano at the storehouse. Takano's been... Oh, yeah, not at <laughs> trying all. Trying to get in with the... Trying to get in with the Sonozaki girls so she could sneak into their mansion. <laughs> <laughs> People hate to see a girl boss winning. <laughs> No, no, don't worry about it. You see, when you order the Odin here, for some reason, it ends up on the annual invoice for our gas contracts. So don't be shy and have another drink. <laughs> the man, red-faced, waved his hand to say that he'd had enough disip and disappeared into the brilliant neon lights in front of the station. Guma-chan, you should be taking notes. The most modest people are the ones who live the longest. <laughs> Was all that true? I don't know about that, whether or not it's true. I think there's some meaning in hearing something that sounds so plausible. Would something like that be a motive to go for the mayor? Kuma-chan, here's what I always say. The motive only has to be enough for the person in question. You need to think about how different people value different things. Hey, bartender, give me another mug. What was it that they said? You can't neglect the heart, right? <laughs> Though we have been suppressing the information, Tomotake and Takano's deaths were already known throughout Hinomizawa. All of the rumors pointed to them having incurred the wrath of Oyashiro-sama for setting foot in the Forbidden Temple, the storehouse for ritual implements. Literally everybody knows that they were in yep. there. Literally everybody. Literally Even it. the police officers from the next town over know exactly what everyone was up to. Right? So, like, who let that out, huh? Huh, <laughs> Shion? Huh? According to the rumors, there were two other people who went in there with them, Shion Sonozaki and Keiichi Maibara. People were whispering in the shadows that those two would be cursed by Oyashiro-sama as well. Apparently, however, the responsibility didn't fall solely on the four trespassers' shoulders. Until last year, it was locked up tight, but this year it had been changed to a simpler lock. Hadn't that been a what allowed the thieves to enter so easily? Those were the rumors going around. 
Uh, you ever seen it, Kuma-chan? I remember it well. I had to go there for something quite a while back. Sorry, I don't really remember. It was locked up so tight it was scary. There were these little real heavy bars holding it shut. Sealed up as good as a bank vault. This year it was a very simp and cheap, simple and cheap simp, simple and cheap padlock. <laughs> the lone girl protecting the shrine, Rika Ferude, disliked the heavy locks and consulted with the mayor, who had replaced it with a simpler padlock. Interesting. Rika somehow made it easier for Mio to get in. So then the mayor... Oh. So then the mayor and Rika Furude share the crime? So then after the mayor, wouldn't Rika Furude be in danger next? There's a decent possibility. Kuma-chan, I want you to contact all the cars we have here in Hinamizawa. Tell them to stick near the Furude shrine. Uh, got it. Interesting. What's going to happen? I'm so curious. This has not at all been what I was expecting from chapter two, so I am <laughs> I am delighted here. I love that you your your um grand scope theory, a lot of it was about like the Sonozakis trying to use this yep. to control people and so on. And now it's like that's the th theory that Shion is advancing in chapter two and yep. that Oishi is clearly investigating and it's like, hey, you were one chapter ahead, but not eight chapters ahead. <laughs> well, as far as I know, I don't know that, again, I don't know that the characters bringing it up necessarily means that it's incorrect. That's true. Right? Because there's that, there's that expectation there, right? That if a character brings it up, then like, oh, it must be wrong. It's, it's, it's discrediting in some way. But also, RO7 is a smart enough author to play on that. Mm -hmm. So on that exact feeling. So uh, we'll see. We'll, I don't know. I, I'm really going to have to spend uh, some more time doing the, on the deep read for this chapter, figuring out what I really think is going on here. <laughs> if I think there's any parent trap shenanigans going on, it will, like how this would affect my theory, if at all, do I have to start from the ground up again? It wouldn't be the end of the world if I had to start from the ground up again, because again, my my original theory was kind of just based on a long shot. The um the one uh, 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 like the grand scope theory because mm -hmm. that was all just like what what would explain everything I have right now but scoozy after hanging up on Shio and I searched for Rika Chan's phone number in my school contact list oh phone books <laughs> there it is my fingers trembled with urgency and I failed multiple times to put in the simple five digit number. Keiichi, are you calling someone at this hour? It's late and it's being rude to the other person. Th th that doesn't matter right now. I shouted angrily at my mother, listening to the dial tone. Pick up, come on, pick up! The time was 11pm. It certainly wasn't early, it was essentially the middle of the night. Had Rika-chan already gone to bed? Her phone would be ringing constantly though, so would she get back up for me? Rika-chan didn't pick up. She didn't pick up. She didn't pick up! Maybe she just happened to miss it. Maybe her bed was just... too far away from the phone. The sound of a phone ringing gets clearer and clearer the longer you go on sleeping. And then... The bathroom? Yeah, she must be taking a bath. If that was the case, then even if she heard the phone, she wouldn't be able to pick up. It was a little late to be taking a bath, but it was possible she normally took baths right before bed. I'll wait 30 minutes, then try calling again. <laughs> Here's the thing. Rika-chan lives in a home with... Right? She she has a house she lives in. Who does she live with? Why are they not picking up the phone? Yeah. Yeah. Even as I was thinking that, I called her house over and over again. I kept calling. Over and over and over again. I kept calling on her, but she didn't pick up even once. I think I kept trying for about 30 minutes, and she wasn't picking up. Were my phone calls so persistent that she had gotten scared of picking up the receiver? It couldn't possibly be it. There's no point in doing this any longer. The best thing to do would be to go there in person. Where was Rika-chan's house, though? Oh shit, I never even asked her where she lived! <laughs> her residence was written there in the contact list, but it was an address with mostly numbers, so I couldn't tell where it was by just reading it. Isn't there a map or something in here? I live at eight! Eight what? Just eight! <laughs> Rika Furude. 
Her last name was Ferude. It's a bit of an odd last name, so it might be easy to find. Thinking that, I rummaged around the drawer with the phone book, but I could only find things about take-up menus and phone numbers for public establishments. Shit, 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 shit! I tore the one thing after another out of the drawer, but I didn't come up with any clues as to where her house was. <sighs> Calm down, Keiichi Maibara. If you don't know, then just ask. Ask someone who does know. That's it. Rena's gotta know! I looked at Brenda's phone number on the contact list. Rena Ryugu. There she was. Who does Rena live with? Wait. Did I hear something in my left ear there, or was that just my cable? Yeah, there's people outside revving their engines and shouting. Oh, okay. That's okay. I was trying to <laughs> tip, like, is that the sound design in the game or no? Hello, this is Ryugu. Oh, it's not Rena. Oh my god. Oh, the legendary Ryugu family in the flesh. <laughs> it was the. Vo uh, do you want me to be? Sure. Hello, this is Ryugu. It was the voice of a grumpy-sounding man. Must have been Rena's father. I'm calling in the middle of the night. I need to be polite. I'm sorry for calling so late at night. This is my Bara. Is there any chance Rena's son is around? Rena is taking a bath. Oh, she's done. Rena. There's a friend of yours on the phone. Right. Hold on. Because, um... That's her given name right but she prefers yep. to go by Rena. yep is that what it is um yeah i don't uh where i don't remember where we got that from it was from one of the tips in chapter one tips in chapter one yeah okay okay so that her parents still call her Rena, huh seems like it oh she's done Raina, there's a friend of yours on the phone. Oh, right. Raina Ryugu was her real name, wasn't it? i gotten so used to calling her Rena that hearing her real name caught me a little off guard. Hello, this is Rena. Oh, it's me, Keiichi. Sorry for calling so late. Huh? Keiichi-kun, what do you need at a time like this? Like this? Well, actually, I wanted to know where Rika-chan's house is. Rena seemed a little appalled I called her for something like this at this hour. However, she spoke her next word seriously, as if she caught on how urgent my need was. Okay, sure. You know the assembly hall on the grounds of the Furude Shrine. There's a two-story shack used for storage behind it. That's where she lives. So I was right! <laughs> I was right! This whole rigmarole! Yep. And I was still right the whole time! Rika's house, quote unquote, is just the shack out behind the temple. <laughs> Where she lives with Sonico. <laughs> I couldn't immediately visualize the place, but as long as I knew where she lived at the shrine grounds, I'd just have to take a look around. I've got it, thank you. I'm sorry again for calling so late. Apologize to your dad for me too, would you? Okay, but Keiichi-kun... Why do you want to know where Rika-chan lives? Rena asked me in an unusually sharp way, halting me before I could hang up the phone. I hesitated for a moment about whether to tell her. He was killed because I told him. Keiichi-kun, if you're still listening, could you answer me? Why are you asking where Rika-chan lives at a time like this? Rena affected her usual tone, but beneath her words lay a certain tension, like she'd intuitively sensed like something was going on. If you think she's in danger, then bring a friend. <laughs> what do you do, Keiichi? If it's Rena, can't I tell her? He was killed because he found out. I revealed everything, so he was killed. Keiichi-kun, Rena is being serious. Please answer me. Rena asked me once again in a tone so forceful I couldn't imagine her ever using it normally. I was taken aback by her vigor. Rena was Rika-chan's friend, too. She had the right to be concerned about Rika-chan disappearing. If I told Rena, then, even if only for a moment, I could drive away my horrifying fears. Rena, well, I can't exactly tell you why, but... Yes? Rena's tone was seriousness itself. Just from that tone, I could feel her saying, No matter what you say, Keiichi-kun, I'll believe you. That subtle sense of security gave me the courage to reveal the truth. I have a feeling that Rika-chan is in danger. You mean like a premonition, or do you have some reason to believe she's in danger? I really didn't have time to go back and forth with Rena about this. Still, I think listening to her calm voice soothed my pointless impatience. I don't have much reason, but... And yet I still hesitated. 
I had told Rikachan that we'd snuck into the ritual storehouse. The mayor to whom Shiona had confessed before that had already disappeared. So it was possible that Rikachan had also... I didn't know how to explain it to Rena. While I was tongue-tied, Rena spoke up. Sorry for asking something so weird. I thought about it, and it isn't like you need to be sure. Rena laughed a little, seeing a bit absent-minded. I wasn't exactly in the mood to laugh, so this time I was dumbfounded. She continued in a cheerful yet still purposeful voice. You're worried about a friend. I don't think you need a reason to go and check on them. Even if Rika-chan was asleep and you ended up waking her up, if that was why you did it, then none of us would get mad. Rena, thank you. Okay then, Kei kun just one thing. You called Rika-chan's house, right? Then you just couldn't get through, so that's why you asked me where her house is? Yeah, that's right. I must have called her over ten minutes. She could just be sleeping and none of notice. Rika-chan's house is really small. She would definitely hear the phone ringing even if she was asleep. Sadako-chan is there too, so there's no way neither of them would notice. <laughs> again. Yep. Again. You called it immediately in chapter one. Yep. Two orphans living at the temple grounds, unattended. <laughs> yep, just... Apparently they have a home, at least, and they have a phone in there, so presumably they're not, like, freezing or starving, but... Yeah, okay, glad to know that my, my, my... For... I don't know why I'm happier that I'm right about that, there's just something... There's something very sweet about the two of them taking care of one another that I'm like, <laughs> aw. Huh? Sadako, you mean she's living with Rika-chan? Yes, obviously! Yeah. You didn't know? Well, we can talk about that later. Anyway, if you called that much and no one answered, then something's definitely wrong. Rena understood the situation wasn't normal far faster than I could ever imagined her to. It made her seem dependable. However, the fact that Rena acknowledged this also meant that the best case possibility of it all just being the result of my own needless fears went right out the window. I'll go to Rika-chan's house right now. Will you come with me? I can show you the- oh. I'll go to Rika-chan's house right now. Will you come with me? I can show you the way. Sounds good. Let's meet up at the same place as usual. I'll be waiting for you. No, wait. I'll come get you at your house. You just wait there and tell your family you're coming with me to Rika-chan's house, okay? Will that be alright? We might lose time if you come here. Did you call me chan too? She's really dependable at times like these. If you haven't, then I'll give her a call. My thoughts froze for a moment. Shiona just told me to be careful around Mion during our phone conversation a little while ago. The Sonozaki main house was somehow lurking behind the surface of the annual freak deaths. Then the current heir to the family, Mion, wouldn't be uninvolved. What did that mean she was, wasn't uninvolved in what happened this year to Takano-san and Tomatake-san? And also the mayor's disappearance. Okay, bye. I'll be right over. Wait for me. That's all Rena said before hurriedly hanging up. Now wasn't the time to be doubting Mion. I needed to make sure Rika-chan was safe. I got changed to grab my key, grab the key to my bike. Figured things would go more smoothly if we met up in the place we usually do before school. I figured things would go more smoothly if I ignored the clearly given instructions. <laughs> Rena wouldn't need to come all the way to my house. My parents would probably have objected if I told them I was leaving, so I crept out without a word. Making sure to maximally not inform anyone. KG. KG. <laughs> He's making all the mistakes. All the mistakes. Oh, hey. I just realized that the word flim is MILF backwards. <laughs> <laughs> is that what Aphex Twin was writing about? I guess so. <laughs> don't ask me why that came into my head just now. I know why. <laughs> I know you know why, but don't ask me anything else. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you all needed to hear that. The night was unusually warm and disagreeably humid. She said Rikachan and Sadako lived together, right? Uh, there wasn't it only Rik then it wasn't only Rikachan, but Sadako wasn't there either. Realizing what them living together really meant caused my thoughts immediately to take a turn for the worse. I can't be Sadako is she's got nothing to do with any of this. Even if there wasn't a reason for Rikachan to disappear, there shouldn't be one for Sadako. Keichi-kun. Rena was really fast. She approached me on her bike at amazing speed. Her breath was ragged, painting a clear picture of just how hurriedly she'd been going. I... Hmm, interesting. I'm glad they ran into each other. Which direction did she come from? Yeah. Because I was like, 
huh. Did she ask him to wait there because she's coming from a different direction and she doesn't want to be seen approaching from somewhere where not normally, but... Let's get going! Keiichi kun, I thought I told you to wait at your house. Rana's expression was all business. Was she mad? It came out of the blue and I faltered for a moment. I just figured it would be faster to meet up here. Keiichi kun, don't you get it? Rena shouted, clearly angry. I'd never seen her like this before. Angry, but still doing her pose. Do I get it? What's the problem? She seemed to notice she was scaring me, took a couple of deep breaths, then continued as if admonishing me, but her expression didn't soften it at all. Keiichi kun, the whole village is in an uproar now that the elder disappeared, right? Yeah. Now you're telling me that Rika chan and Sadoko chan aren't where they're supposed to be, right? Yeah, that about sums it up. Then you need to be more careful. Do you have any idea how dangerous it is to be standing out here alone in the middle of the night? I began to understand where Rena's anger was coming from. You told your family you'd be going to Rika chan's house with me, didn't you? So that in the worst case scenario, if you and I were to disappear, people would know when and where we did. Rena was perfectly level-headed in this emergency situation. Ever since the night of the Watanagashi, every night someone had died or disappeared. On the night itself, Takano-san and Tomotake-san met strange ends. On the next night, the Elder vanished. Now on the next night after that, Rikachan and Sadako were nowhere to be found. I hadn't been thinking of anyone but myself, but it wasn't enough to say that Hinamizawa was a little weird at the moment. It was, in fact, extremely strange. Rena had even anticipated our own disappearances, and had told me to tell my family where I was going. I was embarrassed at my own carelessness. The need to be embarrassed made me afraid of the night. I'm sorry I didn't tell them yet. Okay, then let's go tell them together. With Rena beside me, I wheeled back towards my house. You are very level-headed in this situation, Rena. I can't tell if you're buying time or if you're just like... The space cadet weirdly has things on lock all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, which... You know, because she's dealt with some shit. <laughs> or, if my theory from chapter one is right, she knows what's going on <laughs> and knows how to best be safe in this situation. The moon seemed strangely high in the sky, a sky that was uselessly vast and cold, so that no matter what, it would never seem to me like a dream. This cruel fact had already confronted me. On such a crazy night, Rena had been unimaginably dependable. In Mazawa's metamorphosis, enough to make Rena caution... <laughs> Caution me against carelessness was to me the most fearsome thing of all. The moon seemed strangely high in the sky. We met up with Mio and on the way, and she, of course, was unsure whether to believe me about Rika Chan and Sadako's disappearance. Kei Chan, are you serious? I'm gonna get really mad if this is a joke. Mion was clearly displeased. If this were a joke, it wasn't very funny. I understood how indiscreet my words were. Ever since the day before yesterday, someone had either died or vanished every night. Rikachan and Sadako disappearing after all that was something you just couldn't say even in jest. Mi-chan, if it really is a joke, don't get mad. Smile. It would be a joke after all. We need to go make sure whether it's a joke or not. You're right. Sorry for getting upset. However indiscreet a joke it may have been, if we learned that our friends were safe, it would end up as nothing more than a funny story. Having been warned about that by Rena, Mion gave a dry smile, the tension she felt loosening a bit. She mounted her bicycle as well. Our three bicycles' lights flashed down the pitch-black roads. They were some of the only illumination outside. Okay, so they do have lights on the... Is it weird that that's what I was worried about? <laughs> <laughs> Kei-chan, why did you suddenly decide to call and ask about Rika-chan's house at a time like this? Mion asked me the same thing I had, that I had trouble explaining to Rena. Would it be weird to call it a premonition? Couldn't quite tell because it was dark, but I thought I could see Mion smiling very ambiguously. I definitely understood that she wasn't convinced, though, despite the darkness. Well, I had this bad dream while I was snoozing, and I couldn't get it out of my head. So, did Rika-chan get kidnapped in the dream? Well, it's more of a vague feeling sort of thing. If Rika-chan had answered the phone, I would have called you and Rena after that. Would you have? Oh, oh, I see what he's saying. Lies smoothly babbled out of my mouth, makeshift though they were. It was lying because I thought telling them I was connected to Shion would be like silently admitting we'd stolen into the ritual storehouse together that night. Because as I've learned from Rena telling me point blank, lying is going to help me. <laughs> this is the best thing I can do. Mion didn't impress me any further. 
I don't know whether that convinced her. Or maybe she figured that making sure Rika, Chan, and Sadako were safe would be faster than making an issue out of it. How come Sadako doesn't get a Chan? <laughs> hey! Too, too gremlin-y to get an honorific. Hey! <laughs> What's the honorific for gremlin? <laughs> I felt relieved and immediately a little guilty. Miona hadn't really been acting any differently these last few days, but I'm still trying to distance myself from her for some reason. It was only because of what I heard from Shion and Ooishi-san that she was the successor to some kind of super extravagant gang family. No, was I just trying to force myself to forget? Don't do that, Keiichi Maibara. Wasn't it... Wasn't it Mion who was the first to ask about the night of the Watanagashi? In such a harsh tone at that, have I already forgotten the terror I felt? At the time, Mion looked like someone different from the Mion I knew. When I think about that Mion, then Shion and Oishi-san's descriptions of Mion made a tiny bit more sense. That's it, isn't it? If it wasn't for how she acted that day, then I wouldn't be feeling this way towards her now. What on earth was going on with her back then? I was conveniently thinking only of everything she had done after that, while disregarding the very first thing. The thing I should have been looking at most, wasn't I? Mion was pedaling her bicycle in front of me, her long hair fluttering in the wind. No matter how long I looked at her back, it never gave me any answers to any of my questions. We went all the way to the stone steps leading up to the shrine grounds. Of course, we weren't going to want to haul our bikes up there, so we parked them beside the staircase instead. So, uh, this is the Ferude Shrine. Everybody comes and goes as they please, as if it were a park, but this place is actually a grand estate owned by the Ferude family. So the entire shrine is private property. Really makes you feel the passage of time, huh? Ten or twenty years ago, it would have looked the exact same. Rika's real estate. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Rika's land shark. <laughs> oh, hey, wait, hold on. We do have the land shark here today. Thank you. What does that mean that the Ferude family is really old? With a history going back generations. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they're gone. That's odd. Rena said something clearly disquieting, so I ran over to her. What's wrong, Rena? Rika-chan and Sadoko-chan always leave their bicycles here. See? They're gone. I took a look around. Indeed, there were no other bicycles aside from the ones we'd taken to get here. Couldn't they have parked them somewhere else? Could they have brought them up the stairs? Those girls couldn't do that, Keichi-kun. Just as she said, I couldn't imagine Rika-chan and Sadako lugging their bikes all the way up there. There's really no, like, smooth road up to it? How did they get all that stuff for the festival up there, then? That's why they needed a bunch of all the dudes in town to collaborate to lug it up the big-ass steps. Because it's literally just the steps are the only way up. There literally is no either other way for them to, to get stuff up there. And Gotta have cool, imposing steps for your temple so that it's like a whole experience going up to visit. Yeah, no, that, that's 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 awesome in one hand, but on the other hand, that's gotta be, a, yeah, like, what do they do with their bikes in the winter? <laughs> and it's a real problem for accessibility. Yeah, I mean, like, come on. Thank God no one in Himizawa needs a wheelchair, but the moment they do, ooh, you're getting an angry letter. <laughs> we hadn't yet knocked on Rika-chan's door, but reality was already sparking some ideas that weren't what you'd call good. Maybe they were just parked under some trees and we hadn't <sighs> noticed them. I refuse to believe that not being able to find their bikes here was proof that they disappeared. Let's go. The only way to be sure is to check their house. We all nodded and dashed up the stone steps. We passed through the red arch and came out onto the shrine grounds, which was covered in neat gravel. It was so quiet here, as though the Watanagashi festival had never happened. Where's the house they live in? Over here. Come with me. Rena took the lead and sprinted off. We went toward the assembly hall behind the shrine, then looped around behind it. In the darkness of the night, we found a small prefab two-story shack that looked like a warehouse. That's where they live? <laughs> all, of this, all of this family real estate, this is where Rika lives. <laughs> That's... Why, huh? Yeah. Like, there must have been a family home. Unless that was the family... No, that doesn't... I... Why? The lights are off. Are they sleeping? Let's knock. 
ran at a meal near the shack, which didn't really look like a place people would live. It's such a beautiful shrine, so I figured they'd leave an equally beautiful house. It was far from what I had expected. Rika-chan, Saroko-chan, are you there? Rena shouted up toward the second floor. Her voice was restrained at first, but it steadily grew louder. There was no answer. In fact, there wasn't any sort of activity in the house at all. They might be sleeping. Let's wake them up. Mion banged on the shutter with both hands. The loud echoes echoed, loud sounds echoed into our surroundings. We would have to notice this much noise. They would turn on the light in their room, fling open the windows and yell, What time do you think it is? That, however, wasn't happening. There was absolutely no response. Mion stopped slamming her fist on the shutter, and a sudden silence fell over us. The silence aroused terrible thoughts. I feel the blood draining from my face. It's locked. I wonder if we can get in somehow. Rena showed no signs of stopping. It didn't look like she would admit they weren't there until we went inside and saw for ourselves. The refusal to give in gave me strength. Uh, the second story windows wouldn't be locked. I'll give them a try. <laughs> okay, Chan, a ladder. Mion brought over a ladder that was standing against the house. The footing was a little unstable for me to be climbing, but Mion held the ladder firmly in place for me. I hadn't climbed up too many ladders. My inexperience with them exposed, I climbed up one step at a time and tried to open each window on the second floor. Me, Chan, I'm going to go check the main house just to be sure, okay? I'll be right back. The main house? Rena darted away. What? A main house? It's the Ferude family's actual house. After her parents passed away, I think it's been left like that. Oh, right. Rika-chan's parents, they passed away, huh? At that point, I recalled something else. Wasn't Sadako living here, too? Sadako's also an orphan. Her parents fell from a cliff because of Oyashiro-sama's curse. Then her older brother, Satoshi-kun, he disappeared. Satoshi, I've heard that name before. Remembered, he was the one who disappeared last year because of the curse. Ever since then, Sadako and Rika-chan have been living in this shack. Neither of them has any family, but at least they're together. Of all the things to hard read, this is the saddest. They help each other out. Rena said main house, didn't she? Wouldn't it be easier to live there? The curtains were drawn, so I couldn't get a good look inside to see, but... Two young girls living together seemed like a pretty tough life. I think she tried that at first. She said it was hard, though, because it reminded her of her parents. Oh, I had no idea. I felt really bad for them. They were normally so cheerful at school that I never even realized an atom of this. Rika-chan and Sadako-chan. They have it hard, don't they? Oh, Rika's depression shack. <laughs> 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 has a nicer house but can't live in it because no. needs one to adequately reflect the mental trauma. <laughs> I can't gremlin in there. It's just too nice. Need need personal surroundings bad enough to reflect the mental condition. <laughs> hey! <laughs> She's cursed. Huh? Suddenly, Mion said something in such a low voice that it didn't sound like she was really cursing someone and I didn't let it slide. Turned around to the ladder to face her and asked again, Mion, what did you just say? I said she's cursed. Mion, still holding onto the ladder, brought her head up to look me in the eyes. As soon as our eyes met, an absolute zero jolt of electricity surged through my body. Her eyes clouded over, and within the boiled a bubble to stew of chaos. It whirled around like a raging sea, and bubbles floated to the surface. I had at some point been trapped on this ladder like being cornered on a dead-end street. Mion, you, you why? Why are you making that face? Intended to follow up with you're going too far with this joke and give her a forced smile. However, on such uneven footing as I was, the only thing that came out of my mouth was a hoarse groan as I desperately struggled to not let nausea overwhelm me. Saroko Hojo, she's been cursed by Oyashiro sama. That's why she's got red eyes, take warning. Awesome. Neo and answers with a response to something I never asked, as if replying to someone else's question. The only people who fell from the park observation platform were her parents. Only her parents, who treated her like dirt, died that day. She was the only one to survive. What about her brother? Where does she fit in? Where does he fit in, in this picture? She was the only one to survive, but her parents died. So what about her brother? Then she was sent to live with her aunt, who treated her cruelly. 
and the aunt was killed on the night of Watanagashi by some deviant who beat her to death so violently her brains were everywhere, and her head an entirely different shape by the end of it. Then Satoshi-kun, who always protected her, he suddenly disappeared on her birthday. Someone made him disappear even though he... Someone made him disappear even though he wasn't abusing her. The police judged him to have run away from home, but Satoshi-kun wasn't the kind of person who would do that. He was always earnest. He would never ask for anyone else's help. He would always drag himself through everything with hard work alone. He worked so hard, he nearly ground his bones into dust. All for his one and only little sister, and yet, someone made him disappear. She was the only thing he lived for, and yet someone made him disappear. Poor, poor Satoshi-kun. He was never rewarded that Satoshi-kun. How ungrateful that child is. She is cursed. All who get near her suffer the same fate. The curse kills them or the curse makes them disappear. She cannot have any relief. She cannot have any relief. It's probably Sadako's fault that Rika-chan disappeared too. It has to be, it has to be, it has to be, it has to be. It has to be, has to, has to, has to. Neon was mumbling words over and over that were no longer coherent. Her shoulders were trembling so hard I could feel it through the ladder. I almost lost my footing, which made me realize just how far away the ground really was. Cal calm down, Mion. I don't know what you're talking about. I, don't, I also remember we thought about this too back in chapter one, how it seems like she is kind of the nexus of all this. <laughs> like, and yet still she gremlins onwards. <laughs> Can't keep me down. <laughs> I wasn't even sure if she heard me. Mion rocked back and forth, and that rocking and trembling was becoming even more violent. Help. Help me, the ladder, it's falling. Help me. Help. And just then I heard the sound of many people running towards us. Oh, oh, hey, over here. I very nearly said help me out right. Four or five adults led by Rena ran over here with flashlights. Keiichi-kun, Michan, sorry I took so long. I borrowed the key. Oh, nice one. Seems all the windows and doors are perfectly sealed. I was getting worried. When I heard me on talking like nothing had just happened, I again felt a chill running through me. The person currently holding the ladder in place, it was definitely Mion. It was the real Mion Sonozaki. But then, the person muttering to themselves just a few seconds ago, who was that? The person who was mumbling about terrible things like curses, who was that? I jumped down from the ladder as if running away before Mion turned into that person who wasn't Mion a second time. The adults tried a few different keys on a key ring as they tried to open the big shutter on the first floor. Rika-chan's house used to be a disaster shelter for the town council, so the key to the shutter is still kept in the mayor's house. It's so the mayor's house is within walking distance? Not just, like, is within running distance from here? Apparently. It's Rika-chan and Sadako's private residence now, though. Well, this is on Rika-chan's property anyway. Nobody complains about it. Mio gave me a smile as she said that. I, however, could only return her gaze with an aghast expression. She was acting all too normal now, but that only contrasted all the more sharply with her earlier un -Mion like creepiness. Bang! Bam! Clatter! Clatter! Bang! The shutter opened up for the first time in a very long while. Rana located the light switch and wasted no time going inside. I followed her in. Rika-chan! Saroko-chan! If you're here, say something! We climbed a narrow staircase. So we, we don't, not even remarking on the adults that are here now. Okay, cool. It looked n nothing like more than a warehouse, but now that I was inside, I could feel how lived in it was. It was a person's home. Somehow the scent of the two of them filled the place. This was definitely where Rika-chan and Sadako lived. The first floor doubled as a town assembly warehouse, but the second floor was a space entirely for living. Just like a one-room apartment, past the kitchen was a living room taking up about 150 square feet. Dressers, cupboards, and the like were packed into the space, and in the corner there was a huge pile of clothes that appeared to have just been taken in from drying outside. In the center of the living room was a fold-up table, and on it were small containers for things like soy sauce and salad dressing. The sense of a frugal lifestyle drifted from all of it. It was strange that they weren't here in the middle of the night like this. The adults climbing the stairs one at a time began to make a fuss and talk amongst themselves. So? Not here? 
Yeah, they're not here. This is definitely weird. The village had just been thrown into chaos yesterday because of the mayor's disappearance. And then today, even Rika-chan and Sadako had... Were they out playing somewhere together? That can't be. Other bicycles aren't here, though. Where would they have gone so late at night? Have uh, they just not come back yet? Where'd they go? The adults put forth various possibilities, and the house immediately devolved into a state of confusion. Eventually, Mio and settled them down. I don't want to believe it, but the mayor, Kimiyoshi, disappeared yesterday. We can't say that this is unrelated. The adults' faces paled at Mion's declaration. Maya and Rena's did as well. Let's see. They could have gone nearby for some tea or something, then accidentally fallen asleep. Whoever invited them might just not be able to wake them up at all, too. Let's eliminate that possibility first. Makino-san, please go around to the houses near the stream. Keitaro-san, go look near Ojaga Lake. Okamura-san, you... Oh, hey, Okamura. So the father of, uh... The guy that Keiichi's been extorting. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we, I think we've heard some of these names before. Hold on, I've got a list of, from chapter one of... Random uh, names that came up once. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, where else, what else am I going to do with that? Um, the culprit is Makino-san. Oh, 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 so Makino. So we know uh, that is probably Takazo Makino. Or Makino Takazo. Because uh, we know a Takazo that works at the Makino bike shop who oh, has okay. hobbies of flute and bonsai. I see. So either... So Makino probably runs the box shop and Takazo might be someone different who works there, actually. Either way, we have heard the name Makino before. Um, Keitaro. Oh, Makino, the bike shop, also uh, handles goods for the Festival Bazaar. There we go. There's a little new fact for you. What about the normal goods? Uh, no one knows. <laughs> yeah, and uh, as far as that's the only name I, we've recognized. Okamuro-san we recognized from earlier this chapter. Keitaro might have come up, but I don't have it in my list of random names about town. Mion probably gave directions to the villagers. The adults followed them without hesitation despite her age. We'll remain here and call up anyone we can think of on the phone. Okay, everyone, you have your orders. Got it! The adorts all roared in reply and pounded back down the stairs below. Wow, Michan. You're not only chairperson of the school, but Hina Mizawa too. <laughs> no time for jokes. Hey, step aside. This old man is using the phone. Mion grinned proudly, took the receiver, and got started. Rena gave Mion a trusting look, considering her dependable for doing all this. My feelings, though, were a little more complicated. Since her leadership seemed to be affirming the Sonozaki family successor impression that Shion and Oishi-san had given me. Stop right there, Keiichi Maibara. None of that matters now. The most important thing is to make sure Rika-chan and Sadako are safe. Couldn't there be a clue hinting at where they might have gone somewhere in this room? Oh, still though, I wouldn't know what to look for anyway. If we tore the, hor if we tore the whole place apart and figured out what was different from before, we might be able to speculate, but there was nothing strange about this room, and there were no clues in sight. In the first place, I had never been here before. There was no way for me to know what was different if I didn't know how the room usually looked. Hey, don't give up, Keiichi Maibara. Stop thinking and start looking for something. In search of something, I tried pulling open the dresser drawers and opened the windows. I didn't uncover anything meaningful, though. Rena, also unable to stand around doing nothing, was looking around the room like I was. Hey, Rena, I don't think you'll find Rika-chan by opening the refrigerator or the cabinet underneath the sink. I just thought they might be hiding. <sighs> As we were searching, it got noisy outside. Villagers were quickly assembling here, having heard the commotion. Of course, a lot of them were probably people Mion called. I'll go tell everyone what's going on. The police will be here sooner or later, too. We'll need to explain the situation to Oishi. I want to point out something that Mion probably has all those phone numbers memorized. Absolutely, yeah. Like, that's not just... Like, that's not just... She doesn't have a cell phone with her contact saved in it. She maybe we don't see her carrying one around and it's never mentioned. Maybe she has like an address book. But if not that, she just straight up knows the phone numbers for everyone in the in the town, which wasn't as unusual when you had dedicated brain mm -hmm. space for it, right? But feels very weird today. Mion began descending the stairs, and we followed her out into the front of the house. There were already around ten adults there. And all of them looked uneasy. 
I suddenly noticed the old people from the shrine were here as well, and they were praying for Rika-chan's safety, rubbing their prayer beads. This had gotten bad. This wasn't just a problem between friends anymore. Mion-chan, is it true that Rika-chan and Sadako-chan aren't anywhere to be found? The villagers all formed a ring around Mion, swarming her. She raised her right hand as if silently telling them to calm down. First, let's check every house according to the town council's notification division and see if they're visiting anyone. After all, they could be fast asleep at someone's house and totally unaware that we're looking for them. You are really... Is missing persons searching part of the training you get, Mion? <laughs> Would definitely be hard for someone to wake up Rika-chan if she had eaten a good full meal and fallen asleep like a little kitten afterwards. Oh, how nice it would be if that were the case. I don't want to think about this, but it's also possible something bad has happened. Mion's face grew remarkably more grim, and a wave of silence washed over the adults. We should divide up the work, too. We'll go around to all the places we went last night while looking for the mayor. We'll go look around the damn construction site as best we can. You guys go search around the school. Right. Let's get a move on. Come on, let's go. All of you are up all night looking for the mayor. I know you're all low on sleep, but please, do your best. Got, Got it. it! With that as their signal, the adults scattered in every direction. I figured I should scatter somewhere as well, so I started walking unsteadily in a direction no one else had gone in. It's getting farther and farther from people. I didn't feel scared or anything, though. If someone were made to disappear, Shion and I should be first. It would have been perfectly normal for me to be scared of the dark. However, I didn't feel that way. And why was that? It's because tonight someone had already disappeared, so no one else would disappear tonight. It would take some time before I, exhausted as I was, would feel guilt at the cause of my own selfish sense of relief. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, yeah, okay, so glad that we're getting confirmation of how fucked up the living situation of Retta and Sadako is. Yeah? Uh... Oh, wait, hold on. CG time. I didn't mean for the CG to happen. How did that happen? Oh, well, it's happening. I, what? Yeah, that's, that's just uh, how it's going to do. How did I, how did I do you that? You didn't, it's just no, how it's going to do. No, it's all so different now. Yeah, it's just how it's going to do. Let's, let's roll. What? I. Yeah, it's just how it's going to uh, do. It's just how it's going to be. Suddenly, my vision cleared and a cold wind caressed my body. This was the hill from which you could see the whole village. Looking down from this hill, I could see lights on here and there, and knew the entire village had awoken from its slumber. First Takano-san and Tomatake-san, and then the mayor, and now even Rika-chan and Sadako had been sacrificed, and word of it was spreading everywhere. The strength in my knees left me. This could no longer be a joke. We could have found them. Mion would have told me I was a worrywart, and Rena would just be glad we did. And they would have smiled at me. My hopes disappeared as if I were awakening from a dream. That was what the view I could see was telling me. Following my knees, my arms both bent forward onto the ground and I clawed at it with my nails. I couldn't figure out if I was feeling sorrow or frustration. This is my fault. I couldn't endure the burden of my own sin. And I just told Rika-chan about it. They had nothing to do with it, but Rika-chan and even Sadako had been sacrificed. Had they? Their bikes aren't there. Clearly they went somewhere. Like, it's one thing if they're missing and it seems like they were abducted, right? Mm hmm Or spirited away somehow. But it's not. There's evidence that they just left willingly. To... To where? To where or why? I don't know, but, mm -hmm. like, it's not... I think it's much too early to call to say it's, like, they're, they are sacrificed or something. It was like a cross that Shion and I would have each have to bear the weight of until we ourselves were erased. Going that far, then the problem started long before that. My original sin of breaking taboo and entering the ritual storehouse without asking. I knew I shouldn't have gone there from the start. And yet I lost out to cheap curiosity. I hadn't felt so angry at myself until this very moment. There was a crunching sound. I wasn't even interested in who made the noise, despondent as I was. Oh, and we're back. Keiichi-kun. I know that it didn't capture it on, on the on the um thing because we have the recordings out of a particular way, but the um the the moving CG was widescreen. Mm -hmm. It was like there was some of it behind the bars that you don't get to see. Sorry about that. Seems like some bits still just do the console art by default. Sounds like well, we will have to deal with that. 
Keiichi kun, Keiichi kun, are you okay? It was Rena. Perhaps my clawing at the ground made it look as though I was having stomach pains. She ran over and rubbed my back to make me feel better. This is all my fault. It's all because of me. It's my fault. Keiichi kun's fault. You didn't do anything wrong. Please don't blame yourself for this. I could tell Rena was doing her best to choose the right words out of consideration for me. That's why I could sense her intent behind those words. <laughs> Keiichi kun, you know why Rika and Sadako chan disappeared, don't you? Is what she really meant to say. <laughs> you know what? No, dude's having a rough night. We're just gonna ignore it for now. Because it was an emergency, Rena had ignored the reason why I wanted to make sure Rika-chan was safe, but now that we'd actually confirmed her disappearance, it was only natural Rena would start to wonder about why. However, with the situation having gone this far, I couldn't possibly tell her now. I didn't want to admit that Rika-chan and Sadako had disappeared, but I couldn't let Rena disappear either. Keiichi-kun, if you stay out here in the wind, you'll catch a cold. Ugh. Rena sat down, bringing her eyes level with mine. They told us that children should go back home to sleep. Rena showed me her watch as she said that. It was long past one in the morning. Time was passing too quickly. I, had I been crawling around here for that long? If we don't sleep soon, we'll have trouble getting up for school tomorrow. Even the adults are really worn out, since they were up searching for the mayor last night, too. They were saying they'd break up a little earlier tonight. I was a little upset that they weren't allotting as much time to this as they had to the search for the mayor last night, but that was something I, the cause of everything, had no right to criticize them for. It's all right. The police arrived a little while ago. Look, there's police cars coming into the village right now. Hearing that remark, I looked down at the village to see that there were indeed more cars than one would normally expect at this hour, coming from the darkness on the other side of the mountain. However, none of their emergency lights were on. Of course, their sirens weren't wailing either. That's right, all the incidents that occurred right after Watanagashi were seen as the product of Oyashiro-sama's curse and would be handled in secrecy. Rika-chan and Sadako, too. Their disappearance would end up exactly like the other serial incidents of the past. Surreptitious, unresolved, declared a mystery. And disappear from memory. Rika-chan's face, her sweet face like a western doll's, would fade away. Sadako's smile, her energetic, fanged smile, would fade away. The more I tried to remember them, the less I would be able to. I deserved to be called an idiot dozens of times over, and it wouldn't be enough. I couldn't hold back the tears at my own sheer stupidity. I don't know what you're blaming yourself for, Kei kun but you should stop. I wasn't about to deny it. I couldn't. Even so, I couldn't affirm it, either. I wanted to at least keep Rena out of this. If she found out, she would become involved. Please, Rena, could you just leave me alone? Even if I went home, I wouldn't be able to sleep. If I couldn't get to sleep, then I at least wanted to search for Rika-chan and Sadako until I collapsed. The entire village was looking, and yet they still hadn't been found. I don't think I'd be able to find them if I went looking alone at this point. Still, I had to do it. They disappeared because of me. I couldn't possibly go to sleep while other people are out there searching. I had said that to myself in self-deprecation, but I soon realized that Rema Rena was silently trying to find the meaning of my mumblings. I realized I had misspoke. It's Keiichi-kun's fault. Why do you think that? Why? I can't be. Keiichi-kun, you're not at fault. I was happy that Rena said these things to me, but she only did so because she didn't know the truth. She knew that everything had been caused by my breaking taboo on the night of Watanagashi. Then even Rena would curse my existence. However, I can't even allow for those curses. That would mean confessing my own crimes to Rena. If I spilled even one word of having snuck into the ritual storehouse on the night of Watanagashi, then even Rena could disappear tomorrow night. The gentle, spirited, always joking, always howling, but at a time like this, the most dependable person in the world, Rena, might disappear. I don't want that. Anything but that. It's time I need to bear my own cross. Alone. Okay, Chikun, I know that you always have your friends in your heart. I can really understand feeling like you want to kick yourself. Rena knows, though, that it's not Keiichi-kun's fault. You didn't do anything wrong, Keiichi-kun, and I know that. I know that because I did. <laughs> you, you know that? 
The shivering in my veins rushed up my back and replaced the sorrow in my heart with fear. I didn't tell her anything, did I? M -m Maybe I accidentally said something that caused Renna to figure it out? This is bad, this is bad! Now Renna will disappear, Renna will disappear, Renna will disappear! <laughs> Again, with the same kind of thought patterns here of like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to assume the worst version of things and now just kind of run with that without talk telling anyone what's happening. <laughs> Even when Renna bitch slaps him and is like, no, go talk to your parents, <laughs> tell them where you were going. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Then Renna, the same way I always did, grabbed my head and began to pet it roughly. Keiichi kun, are you thinking that Renna might disappear now too? Because of Oyashiro sama's curse. She puts more force into the hand, rubbing my head. You don't need to worry about that. Renna isn't going anywhere. I promise. Why, how can you say that with such confidence? I mean, someone's been sacrificed every night so far. There was no proof that it won't happen again tomorrow. There was even less proof, after all, that the sacrifice wouldn't be Renna. I don't care who you are. Just please, if you're going to erase someone, erase me first. Please stop cruelly getting rid of people we're close to. Like the mayor for Shion and Rika-chan and Sadako for me. Shion's hysterical shouting came back to mind. They must be planning to kill us last of all. They're not killing the first people who come to mind. They start by killing those we're close to. Then after that, they caused us so much pain. They'll kill us. That must be what they're doing. Rena, please don't disappear. Please don't, as long as I'm still here. I can no longer conceal the sobs welling up within me. Come on, Kei kun crying doesn't suit you. Let's go back to the others. The housewives are cooking some miso soup for us. It'll warm you up and calm you down. Rena prompted me to stand. I didn't have the energy to oppose her, so I stood as she urged me to. We returned to the shrine grounds to find several gas stoves were there with miso soup in big pots. The many villagers there sipped at the soup they were given in a dead, stony silence. Their expressions were absolutely exhausted. Everyone had just been running around the village until a little while ago. From the dreary looks on their faces, though, I assumed they hadn't come up with anything yet. Kei-chan, where did you go? I was worried you'd disappeared too. I'm sorry. Myon held out some miso soup for me, but I refused the offer. I didn't have much of an appetite. Mi-chan, how is it? Did you find any clues? Mion took a sip of her soup, and her expression frank. None at all. School ended and they went home. Then the two of them went somewhere on their bicycles. Moreover, nobody ever saw them riding their bikes, so... When it gets dark out in Hinamizawa, people quickly vanish from the streets. Aside from adults hurrying back home in town, from town in cars or on bicycles, it was normal to see absolutely no one walking around outside. It wasn't all that strange that no one had seen Rika-chan and Sadako riding their bikes. It was the same last night with the mayor. There's no hope. Mion's apathetic tone pricked my nerves, but that anger quickly subsided. She had been doing all sorts of things to try and find Rika-chan until just a second ago. If I asked her, she'd probably say she was up all last night too, looking for the mayor, wouldn't she? She must be far more fatigued than I was. Besides, what about me? I'd spent the time hunched over an indecision all alone. I had no way to say anything about Mion. Kei-chan, I know it's hard, but... Let's turn in for the night. We just decided we should break up the search for now. Drink this and let's call it quits. Is this the end? Oh, no, of course not. Once it's bright out again, we'll do a thorough search with the police's help. They could have gone to Okinomiya, too. People are even saying we should go through all of Shishibone City, investigating whether there are any witnesses. For both the girls and the mayor. Oh. <sighs> anyway, what happened, Kei-chan? Where did you go off to? You vanished all of a sudden. I was really worried. Suddenly, I was on the receiving end, but I didn't have the willpower to respond. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll be more careful. <sighs> Nothing happened? There wasn't anyone suspicious spying on or stalking you? Nothing like that? Not unless you count Rena. Mion demanded with a serious expression, being criticized for how inconsiderate I had been, despite being in so much pain. I was frustrated that I was being criticized, but it was my sin. My sin and I must bear it alone. Nothing. I'll be careful either way. I'm sorry. Mio, now aware that nothing had happened, heaved a big sigh with her shoulders, looking relieved. <sighs> oh my, 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 my. I knew I smelled something good coming from way over here. I'd be much obliged if you allow me to have some. We heard the repulsive voice of a fat man. 
It was Oishi-san trailed by a handful of police officers. He was acting energetically, in a way unfitting given the situation. There's not much left, but you can have some if you want. Mion didn't like Oishi-san very much. Her cold attitude, though, didn't seem to bother Oishi-san in the slightest. It was like splashing water in a frog's face. Well, now, miso soup left always have a bit too much salt for my taste. Confound it, nah. <laughs> what do y'all like, Annie? He recommended it to his subordinates, but everyone gave dry smiles and refused. We got this whole Count of Monte Cristo thing going on. Can't be eaten in the houses of our enemies now. <laughs> what do you think? I make a good at Mondantes? <laughs> So, have the police gotten hold of any clues? Rena's smile was warm enough to replace the miso soup. Well, don't you worry, that little missy. Everything is fine. We are searching for them real good. <laughs> he didn't say a word about having found any new clues. In other words, there had been no progress. That sure was an annoying way of beating around the bush. Yeah, in any case, it really has gotten late. All you youngins should get on home and get yourselves some sleep. It'll be bad for your health otherwise. Yeah, Keichan, Rena, get some rest. These guys get our tax money. They'll handle it from here for us. <laughs> well, we are taxpayers too, you know. I feel like a soba noodle chef eating my own soba. <laughs> I really wasn't in the mood for laughter. In fact, Oishi-san was the only one laughing like an idiot. Okay, seriously, please do your best. Let's go home, Keichi-kun. It'll be harder to wake up tomorrow if we don't. Yeah, that's right. I can always bring you home if you need. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I can always bring y'all home if you need. Kuma-chan, why won't you bring the car around, huh? Um, no thank you. We came on our bicycles, so, uh... No need to worry. We came in a truck. We'll just throw the box in the back. We may have gotten pretty sleepy, but we just needed to ride home at this point. I didn't want to bother po the police like that. Rena, however, nodded. Okay, if you insist, we'd appreciate it. It's probably safer than if we went back alone. When I thought about it carefully, I realized that Rena's idea was extremely rational. Now that it's decided, let's get a move on, shall we? Okay, bye. Good night. Rena, Keichan. Yeah, Michan, you go to bed soon too, okay? Good night. I waved my hand as well, saying goodbye. Rikachan and Sadako still hadn't been found. My unease, however, was steadily being pushed away by sleepiness. Rana showed the police where our bicycles were so that Oishi-san could haul them up into their truck. He prompted us to get into the back seat. A lot of scenes of the police grabbing people's bikes in this episode. <laughs> I could hear the springs squeaking as I sat down onto a seat that would normally hurt my rear end. But at this point, it was very soft. More than comfortable enough for me to fall asleep on. Ladies first, we'll start with the little missus house. Where do you live? Just want to make sure I can get alone with this kid, you know? <laughs> Thank you. My house is, well... Tell us about Rena's house. Rena's voice slowly grew distant. I felt myself being sucked into the void of sleep. <laughs> Hello, May Barrison. Are you asleep back there? Huh? Oh, when I came to, it was quiet. The car was parked. Oh, Ishi-san was giving me light slaps to the cheek. I didn't feel good at all, so I woke up immediately. Oh, I'm sorry. I felt I just fell asleep. Just when we were about to learn important details about where Rena lives. God <laughs> damn it! Something was being held right under my nose. A clump of metal? It was a can of coffee. It's lukewarm by now, but cafe au lait is good even at room temperature. Oh, thank you. Mechanically took the can and opened the pull top. I had a brief jump scare when I was like, oh no, I forgot to get the coffee that I was cooling in the freezer a couple nights ago. <laughs> and then I remembered I did eventually get it after it was a block of if coffee. If you had ice. it, I would have gotten it when I made breakfast the next day. Because <laughs> I would have opened up the freezer and been like, what the fuck Why is, is this here? Why, Why is there is a block here? of coffee looking ice? Right? I'm going to put it on top of you while you sleep and then just let the consequences of my actions happen. The feeling of the warm, sweet liquid going down my throat awakened my sleepy mind. When my drowsiness receded, I started wanting to know why the car was stopped and why I was offered coffee. Oh, Ishizan, who had been to the driver's seat, had at some point moved to the back. 
Suddenly, I had a very bad feeling about this. It reminded me of the questioning yesterday at the library. It was already too late by the time I realized I made a mistake. Today, of all days, it didn't look like I would be getting away. I had a feeling that until Oishi-san heard what he wanted to, he wouldn't be letting me go. Nah, uh, please don't get all fun on me or nothing. I ain't gonna eat you or anything, may bear a sand. Oishi-san gulped down the last of his coffee, then stretched wide, showing me how relaxed he was. That, however, only served to heighten my nervousness. W -w -w what do you need from me? Oh, need? Oh, nothing, really. You're going to evade the question at this point? What a deeply unreadable man. Well, I don't need you for nothing. I just thought that you might need something from me, may I bear a saying. I don't need... I, I don't need anything. Oh, I see. Is that really true? Are you sure there's nothing? No, <laughs> no. There was only one side door in the back of the seat of this truck. In other words, my only exit was blocked off by Oishi-san. I couldn't get away. I could only limply hang my head and maintain my silence. Oishi-san, despite my reticence, relaxed and began smoking a cigarette. The cries of the insects outside seemed to be growing longer and longer, to an amount of time that almost seemed infinite. And here I was sure you had something you wanted to talk to me about. Oishi-san exhaled a puff of smoke. The windows were open, but the tobacco smoke still accumulated inside the vehicle. How much did Oishi-san know? What did he know and what did he want to hear from me? If finding out the truth made you disappear, then if I told him, would Oishi-san disappear too? I had a feeling that I didn't need to worry about that in this case. I just wonder how this all ended up happening. Oishi-san addressed me in a low tone as if he was talking to himself. How all, and all this ended up happening? How the hell should I know? That was what I wanted to know. You know Jiro Tomateki-san and Mio Takano-san, right? I know you do, because I personally witnessed you with them during the festival, along with Shion Sotozaki-san. Weird that this is the second festival in a row that, um... That uh, Oishi has been known, knew in advance to be following Tomatake and watching who he consor consorted with during the festival. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Do you know how Tomatake is saying and Takano san are doing now? Well, they actually will. They passed away. They met a very untimely death. Oishi san probably played that card in order to surprise me. However, I already knew and didn't display the extreme reaction he expected. Well, what's this? Huh. Now, did you already know that? Unfortunately for this question in particular, remaining silent was equivalent to saying yes. Oh, so then you did also know. The reason Tomateki saying that Takano-san would curse like that. People are saying that apparently they went into some forbidden building. The storehouse for ritual implements. That forbidden shed sealing away Hirimizawa's blood stained past. With the mistake that started, it all had happened. Do you know about the rumors, then? Let's say the mayor and Rika Furuda saying I were cursed because of that, too. That would mean it was mine and Shion's fault. He was right, as soon as we revealed what we did. What do they call it, a ritual storehouse? Let's say it was bad luck. The lock to it had been replaced by a simpler one, which made it easier for thieves to get inside. What? This was news to me. Until last year, it apparently had these really big bars and a huge padlock on it. I mean, you never know. Ever since the priest and his wife passed away, Rika Furuda saying has been managing the place now, ain't she? Apparently, she talked to the mayor, saying she wanted them replaced with a lighter, more simple padlock because the bars were too heavy for her. Interesting. So the mayor has say over that. Okay. I didn't know anything about those big bars as he was talking about, but the lock certainly had been a simple one. Pretty cheap one, too, and didn't really fit my impression of what a lock for a place you'd store something as important as ritual implements would look like. Really? Just an off-the-shelf master lock? <laughs> Rika San is a small girl, after all. The bars were heavy with rust, and they might have caused her a lot of trouble. So the mayor hired a craftsman and replaced the lock with a simple padlock so she could open it with a key. So, how does that mean it was bad luck? Here's what I'm saying. Thieves couldn't get in with the old tight lock. The mayor and Rika-san replaced it with a cheap lock and key on their own, so the thieves broke into it. Apparently, that's how it's going down. That explanation's a bit, uh... Letting that slide, certain members of the village delivered punishment upon the thieves, who stole into the ritual storehouse, as well as the mayor and Rika-san, who changed the lock. 
At least those are the whispers that seem to be going round. May Barrasan, what do you make of all this? B -b 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 what do I think? I, I don't really know what you mean by certain members of the village. Are you familiar with the three families? Representatives from each of them gave sole addresses at the Watanagashi Festival's opening ceremony. Did you see them? I came partway through the festival, so I don't really, uh... The three families are the oldest three families here in Hinamizawa. To give actual names, the Kimiyoshi family, the Sonozaki family, and the Furude family. The Furude family. <laughs> <laughs> they each have quite the lineage, it seems. Long ago, it said that everything in the village was decided by a council of the three families. The Kimiyoshi family, the old man Kimiyoshi, meaning the mayor's family, the Sonozaki family, which was Mion's, so the Furude family was Rika-chan's family then. Out of the war, the Sonozaki family quickly expanded their influence. Practically speaking, after leading the fight against the construction during the dam conflict, they jumped to the top of the hierarchy here in Hinamizawa. You see, though, in accordance with the old ways, they still decide important village matters only after consulting with the three families. That's why the leaders of the three families each have their own address at the start of the Watanagashi. In other words, the mayor, the old lady currently in charge of the Sonozaki family, and the last remaining member of the Furude family, Rika-san. I heard the Sonozaki family was pretty high up there, so Rika-chan's family was just as old? Well, as you're no doubt aware, she got no relatives at all. In reality, the Furude family holds pretty much no influence. However, it seems like people gravitate towards Rikitsan on a personal level, and I hear many of the village's elderly have blind faith in her. It was certainly true that Rikitsan had an odd sort of charisma amongst the elderly. <laughs> Every morning, she fills all her spell slots with Charm Geezer. Yeah! <laughs> That's why it works on Mion! <laughs> What are you telling me about all this three family stuff for? Oishi-san paused for emphasis, lighting another cigarette. I explained a lot, but I suppose it still ain't enough. I'm asking because I don't understand. I almost did that in your voice. Oishi gave me a dry, meaningful grin and blew out another big puff of smoke. Members of the three families are disappearing one after the other. That is what I am talking about. I read it based on some kind of old traditions inherent in Hinamizawa, but I ain't know much beyond that. I don't know anything about it either. That's what I'm asking. The leaders of the Kimiyoshi and Furuda families have disappeared. So may the leader of the Sonozaki family disappear next. Well, that's just a random idea bouncing around in my head at the moment. <laughs> just kidding, really. The leader of the Sonozaki family? Who is it? The current leader's the old lady at the main house, but it wouldn't be incorrect to say that practically all the rats of leadership have been transferred to her granddaughter, Mion San. The <laughs> visage of Mion giving prompt directions to the adults while searching for Rika-chan sprung back to mind. M -m -m mion She's gonna disappear? I hadn't even thought of that possibility. All my hair stood up on end. That's insane. Nobody wants that now, right? Of course not. We can't allow that. Clamp. Oishi-san grabbed my shoulders with both hands. That help us, May Barrasan. Uh, what? If there's anything you've noticed about Mion Sonozaki lately, please tell me. It was going along with him? By the time I'd realized it, it was too late. <laughs> Hook, line, sinker. Oishi-san brought his face in closer, almost close enough to ram into me, waiting for my next words. This pressure. I can't tear my eyes away from his. In that moment, I heard a beeping sound. It was from the driver's seat. He ignored it at first, but then it started to bother him, so he finally let go of me and leaned into the driver's seat. Yellow. Yes, loud and clear. It was saved. Of course, it's not like I could use this opening to escape. I see. Yeah, all right. Let's head back then. Yes. Okay, okay. Apparently, he was being recalled. Now that I knew I'd be freed, the tension in my body dis dissipated all at once. Looks like I need to get going. Oh, we were just getting to the good part, too. That's real bad now. Oishi-san flung open the door, excited, and walked around to the front driver's seat. He left the door open. Did that mean I could leave? You really care about your friends, May Barasan. An admirable trait for a kid to have in this day and age. I totally understand that it feels like you'd be betraying them if you told the police anything. 
May Barasan. It's the middle of the night, so get a good night's sleep and then think about it, eh? A little bit of courage from you might end up being what saves many of your friends in the end. Did you want to say that sacrifices wouldn't stop with Rikachan and Sadako? You know this already, but every night since Watanagashi, something has happened. In the past, the curse only occurred once per year, but this time it's been going on for days. What a prosperous year this has been. <laughs> I don't think you can call that prosperous. Not before last. Last night and now today. There ain't no proof something won't happen tomorrow night as well. It's our job to prevent such things before they happen, but uh, for that we need your cooperation, may bear saying. I looked out the open door to see none other than my own house right in front of me. It creeped me out that he knew my name and address, but I was too sleepy right now. I was too sleepy to care. Well, you're probably tired. It's already three in the morning. Please get yourself a good rest, all right? Um, yes, sir. I'll be uh, going now. When I was about to get out of the truck as if to deliver a parting blow, Oishi-san said in a raised voice, I'll be coming by every day until you feel like talking, all right? I don't believe forcing you to confess in an interrogation room is really in fashion these days. I couldn't say anything in response, but me slamming the door shut probably served the same purpose. After lightly beeping the horn, Oishi-san's truck drove off. Did you get your bike from him? <laughs> I went to the front door without waving goodbye. The door was locked, but the chain wasn't up. I unlocked the door and entered. Then walked over to the staircase. That was where I lost consciousness. Good times. Lost consciousness, not even just fell asleep. Good Ooh. times. Ooh! Oh, Ishii sounds a real prick in this one, isn't he? <laughs> oh, I'm loving it. I love Ooh. that Oishi is simultaneously so good at this and so bad at this. He is really good at getting his hooks in people and getting them to getting them to go along and talk. Yep. And yet he still has no clue what's going on after five years in a row of this. Yeah, it's really it really makes you wonder like what like what his actual interest in this is, right? Like if if it feels like if he really wanted to expose things, he would have gotten to the bottom of it by now, but Maybe either he wasn't fully invested in it before, or he's got his interest in something else. Two weeks from retirement, they pull me back in. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you all next time, everyone. Bye. Peace. Smash, smash that like, comment and subscribe, comment and subscribe.